All right, former Liverpool defender and now, of course, Sky Sports expert Jamie Carragher joins us live on the phone. Jamie, very good evening. I guess I've got to start with, how do you react to the news? I think the same as, as most Liverpool supporters around the world, in shock and uh, feeling really, uh, maybe a little bit emotional, sad, really, that, uh, you know, this day was always going to come at some stage, but... I thought that, you know, it'd be another couple of years. Jürgen Klopp's just mentioned his contract ran until 2026. And I went ahead this morning that there was, there was news coming out of Liverpool and Jürgen Klopp was doing an interview. If you'd have asked me, you know, before the interview what I thought it would be, it would probably been the fact that he might have signed a new contract because I just felt, you know, there's no doubt last season would have taken its toll on him. Uh, it would have been tough for him. And just the end of last season and the start of this season, I just felt with a new team, younger players coming in, he may have been re-energised and felt, you know, why would I want to pass this young team on now? It looks like it's on the cusp of, you know, being really successful and maybe doing as well as his first, uh, you know, Liverpool team. So, yeah, I'm still in shock. And, uh, yeah, I'm really sad about the situation because right now, you know, you think of Liverpool, you think of Jürgen Klopp. Jamie, you talk about the surprise of the decision, but Jürgen Klopp has always maintained that he wants to leave the club in good health when he departs. And with the squad doing so well, and he speaks about the potential, the capacity they have to improve, that they've all connected so well together, he feels it's the right time for him to step down at the end of the season. Can you see that? Listen, I can understand that. I've, I've, I've watched, obviously, his press conference at the club, all the, the bits on Sky Sports News today, different interviews. So, obviously, you know, he, he's putting his thoughts out there and you're trying to, you know, work out how, how it works. And, and listen, you can only commend the man because I think what he's basically saying is, you know, he may have been ready to actually walk away in the summer in some ways, but Liverpool had had such a poor season. He didn't feel he could leave the club in that situation because of the connection and, and his feeling for the club. So he wanted to almost feel like it was on the right foot. And again, there's no doubt that is the case right now. You know, it looks like it could be really exciting last sort of three or four months in Liverpool in terms of winning trophies. But I think when you're a manager and you go through that pain of last season and then you come out the other side, I think most managers would say, I want to enjoy the fruits of, of maybe this team and where this team can go in the next sort of two or three years. Because as I said, I... As a manager, I had to go through that pain of just the last season when Liverpool were putting in really poor performances and results around this stage of the season. I remember sort of losing at Wolves, losing at Brighton. There was another bad result, I think, at Brentford, all coming really close together. And, you know, sometimes we, we, we think, you know, certain managers, the greats in the Premier League, like, you know, Alex Ferguson, and Pep Guardiola, Jose Mourinho for a time, Arsene Wenger, that in some ways these, these people are superhuman, but they're not. You know, they, they go through those emotional highs and lows of a football team and I, I, I just think my own feeling and listening to Jürgen that I just think last season must have really took its toll on him and he's just in a position now where he feels like you know Liverpool can still prosper and, and he needs a break. You talk about how exacting that job of being a manager is especially at the elite end when you are competing with Manchester City and we've seen Klopp over and over again put Liverpool before himself he's earned the right now to put himself first? Well, of course, that's just a shaken clock. That's any manager. You know, you, you, you've got to, you know, look after yourself and your health and you've got to have the right energy, uh, you know, to take a football team on. But I think when you manage one of the real big clubs, and Liverpool certainly come into that category. And I think that's what makes the Jürgen Klopp special and, and some of the greats. And I think Alex Ferguson really had this as well. I, I think we, we can't underestimate, you know, the, the importance of energy and enthusiasm for a job every day. Yes, we know these are you know great football minds, have great knowledge. They they take us to places tactically and move the game forward. That, that that's why they're so special. But you know they've got to get up every day and motivate a group of players. And to do it for that length of time, as you said, what you know, Jurgen Klopp did, has done at Liverpool also what he did at Borussia Dortmund, and what Sir Alisson did unbelievably for so long at Manchester United. Yeah, and like, you know it's not just their actual knowledge and what's going on you know between their ears, their actual enthusiasm and, and energy. They keep driving themselves forward and driving a football club forward is unique. And that's why we don't see it so often that managers last this long because it takes, you know, it takes a toll. And, you know, with the media, social media now, the demands that we put on, 
you know, manage ourselves in the media as well, question them if they lose a couple of games. You know, that, that that's 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 uh, that's the ticket now for managers at any club, but certainly at the biggest clubs, there's a lot of questions asked of these people, and uh, and yeah, he. He can walk away uh, any time he wants, as I said, because he's put so much of his of his life and his energy into Liverpool Football Club. Jamie, you sound really down. The Liverpool fans I've spoken to are absolutely gutted. What sort of effect is this going to have on the club, the players and the city? Well, there's no doubt. I think it's a body blow this morning. I think everyone's in shock. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll take a little bit of time to get up, to get over but I do feel between now and the end of the season is going to be a party. It's going to be a roller coaster ride. I really do believe that. And it'll be a case of, you know, let's send this man off, you know, for what he's done for the club and what he's given to us. That, you know, we wanted to go out go out with a bang, I think I put on social media earlier on. That, uh, you know, Liverpool are fighting on four fronts. Who knows? It's very, really difficult to win trophies. Uh, as we know at, at Liverpool but the atmosphere at Anfield as you, as you can imagine that will be against sort of Norwich in the FA Cup's the next game Chelsea's the next league game you know Man City have still got to come there with the biggest rivals now for the league title with Liverpool uh, European nights to come you, you know the Europa League so it, I've just got the feeling that most games at Anfield will be like a European night and that that could really sort of galvanise and push this Liverpool team probably a little bit further than maybe people thought they would go and who knows where that will take them. You know, I would still probably say Manchester City in most people's eyes are slight favourites for the title, but I think Liverpool could be favourites in almost every other competition that they're in. And I'd just be desperate, as, as I think most Liverpool supporters will be right now, is that Jürgen Klopp is sent off with a couple of trophies at least uh, and have a really big swan song uh, on those last final few weeks and his last game at Anfield, and we can give him, you know, the the salute and the remembrance and uh, you know the thanks that he uh, that he thoroughly deserves. Morgan said though in the video when he released the news that this must not the rest of the season must not become about him. How do Liverpool avoid that? Well, Jürgen can say that. Uh, but it's probably not up to him, uh, really. Uh, I think he means that in terms of, you know, journalist questions, you know, before games, maybe after games, and I'm sure he'll just shut that down straight away, and rightly so. But I think the emotion and the feeling that the supporters have for him, I think it'd be very difficult for that to, that to move away and people to forget that he is moving on. Uh, but oh, but I've got no problem with that, and I think all that's got to do is create an atmosphere within Anfield, certainly. Uh that pushes Jurgen Klopp and his team over the line in, the, in these in these competitions that Liverpool are still fighting for. Now, Anfield is known for that anyway. It's you know it's you know it's not just me speaking as as an ex Liverpool player. I think most players and managers in this country who played or managed against Liverpool know there's a special atmosphere there. I just think it kind of become even more special between now and the end of the series because of this news and kind of then, as I said, push Liverpool a little bit closer to the uh, to the trophies that they're fighting for. Are you um, confident that the club has a succession plan in place? Well, the club found out in November. Uh, listen to Jürgen Klopp today. So, and would they have spoken to anyone before today? I'm, I'm not sure. And the reason I say that because I think everyone has been so desperate for the news not to get out. And I'm sure Jürgen's obviously had to tell a few people the closer he's got to the decision of his staff and his players. And the fact that it hasn't got out his testament to everybody involved at, you know, at the club. And, uh, yeah, I think from, from now, though, Liverpool have to get into, into gear in terms of bringing somebody in. Because, listen, this has happened before. Liverpool Football Club have not got a phone because Jürgen Klopp's left. We are losing one of the greatest managers in world football, one of the greatest managers that Liverpool have ever had. And it is a sad day, now, no doubt. But at the end of the season, we can all look back on his time. But in the same breath. We've got to be looking forward to the new man coming in and get behind him and support him and Bill Shankly left, Bob Paisley left, Kenny Daglish left and uh, Liverpool moves on and gets other great managers and that will happen. Uh, who knows who the new man who will be to come in but uh, there's a great structure in place at the football club. I think the football club is in a much better place right now than it was when Jürgen Klopp first came in and that's why 
everybody associated with the club loves Jürgen Klopp so much because we realise the situation Liverpool were in at that time when he came in, but it's certainly not in that same space right now. Um, finally, Jamie, um, OK, so you're saying a great manager's going to come in. If it was down to you, who would that great manager be? Well, I think right now you, you look at the Premier League and you look around Europe and you, you think, who, who sits in Liverpool? Uh, there's no doubt you can't get away from Xabi Alonso, a former teammate of mine, because he's so respected at Liverpool already for what he did as a player. He was a Champions League winner as well, held himself at real class. He's a World Cup winner. That's just his playing side. You think of the managers that he's been managed, sort of Rafa Benitez at Liverpool, Jose Mourinho, and Chilotti, all, all these great figures. And right now, the job he's doing at Bayern Leverkusen, he looks almost like the brightest young thing in, in European football. There's no doubt about that. Uh, the other one I look at in the Premier League, I look at De Zerbi at Brighton. He's done a fantastic job. And the thing that stands out about them as well as, which always stood out about Jürgen Klopp, was that Jürgen Klopp was successful without being the biggest or biggest spenders of teams, if you like. So you're looking at Xabi Alonso right now, he's at Bayern Leverkusen trying to compete with Bayern Munich. You look at what the Zabies done at Brighton competing with you know other you know top teams in the league and doing really well, especially last season. But I, I would certainly say the front runner, and I don't think I'm being too original in saying this, but would certainly be uh, Shabby Alonso. I mean, the job he's doing at Bayer Leverkusen, I think they're still the only undefeated team in Europe now in all competitions. And uh, there's a long way to go, but they're in a great position in all competitions. And yeah. Uh, I think with his playing career, what he's achieved, the managers he's had, and the start he's made to his managing career, I think it certainly makes him the front runner. Jamie, great to speak to you. Thanks very much for coming on. Thank you.